Hey guys, I'm Shannon from Shanta's Workshop, and today I wanted to show you how I made this really pretty lacy textured tumbler using a fondant impression mat for cakes and some chameleon mica powders. I was really excited to make this one. A few things you're going to need are a fondant impression mat. I use counterculture fast set epoxy, rubber bands, chameleon mica powders, an eyeshadow brush, and some black spray paint. The first thing I did was I sanded my tumbler really well and then washed it with Dawn dish soap. I mixed up about 15 milliliters of epoxy for this 30 ounce skinny and I definitely didn't use it all. Um, I'm just putting it right on the stainless too because we're going to put down the impression mat and then once that's cured we will spray paint the entire tumbler black. And I'm not worrying about epoxying the bottom, I'm just making sure all the sides are covered from edge to edge and then I did torch it to pop the bubbles. So I did use this cake mat for another tumbler. So I'm just wiping it with my lint roller to get up any extra pieces of epoxy that were stuck to it or, you know, pieces of glitter and things that got stuck. So now that the tumbler is completely tacky, it is time to apply the fondant mat. So you just want to press down really well to make sure all of those tiny details are getting smushed into the tacky epoxy. And I'm just turning slowly as I go and making sure it's lined up. And if you're smart, you will measure your tumbler and measure your mat and cut it the same measurements, which I did not. I just went crazy and just cut the mat and it's a little too small for my tumbler but it's okay. So I'm getting it all smushed on there. So you want to make sure the top, the bottom, the middle, every single area of the cake mat is smushed onto your tumbler. And once you've got it all smoothed out and stretched around your tumbler, you can apply some rubber bands to help hold it in place as it cures. You can see where it's not meeting in the middle there, so I'm gonna have a seam, which is fine. That's where my decal will go. So I think I used about 10 rubber bands, and these rubber bands also came from Amazon. They're just regular rubber bands. And you just want to make sure they're kind of evenly spaced so you have a nice secure grip and hold for your cake mat. And I did mess up a little bit. I didn't put a rubber band super close to the bottom and you'll see later that the cake mat didn't stick very well to that spot. So there's kind of a blank spot in that area. So once the epoxy is completely cured with a uh, fast set, it only took a couple of hours, you can take off your rubber bands and peel off your mat. You see the gorgeous design imprinted in the epoxy. You can see some spots that I missed. There's that big spot that wasn't smushed down, but it's okay. Just peel slowly. And there you can see my seam where the mat didn't completely reach all the way around. So now it's time to spray paint the tumbler.
All right, so once you get your tumbler spray painted, you're gonna let it dry for a little while, but you don't want it to dry completely. You want it to be a little bit sticky for when you brush on your micas. So we're gonna kind of burnish the micas into the spray paint to give it a nice chameleon, smooth color shifting glow. And the mica powder that I use is from Woody's Goodies and it's called She's a Lady. It has kind of a greenish gold to teal color shift. And then I did find these um, makeup brushes or eyeshadow brushes from Amazon that I'm using to burnish the micas onto the spray paint. So I think I let it dry for maybe 10 minutes, maybe not even 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. And it wasn't long enough because once I started to paint on or to brush on my mica powders, some of the paint started to smear a little bit and you'll see that in a second. So I just had to wait another five minutes or so to let the paint dry a little bit longer. So yeah, I'm seeing it getting on my brush. <laughs> So once I realized that wasn't going to work, I just let it sit for another five minutes or so and covered it up once it was dried a little more. So the main thing while you're brushing your micas on, we are burnishing it into the tacky paint. And this design is very, very detailed. It has a lot of tiny little bumps and ridges. So you really want to get your brush down in there to burnish the micas all throughout. So the, what I did was I went in all different directions with my brush. And there's that spot that did not stick to the mat, but that is okay. I love these chameleon powders so much. It's really hard to capture the color shift that they have. You can see I'm going back and forth, up and down, and then circular motion sometimes. And you're just going to do that all the way around the cup, burnishing your micas into the tacky spray paint. And I do prefer using a, an eyeshadow brush for the micas versus just a paintbrush. Um, because they're really soft bristles and it really helps to get down into all those little detailed bumps and ridges. Such a pretty color shift. Don't forget to do your bottom. And there's the seam where my mat didn't reach all the way around but it still looks fine. These do not have to be completely perfect. So around on those little flowers, there are a bunch of, it's kind of like a really tiny grid for the texture in those. So you really wanna go in a circular motion on those especially to make sure all of your micas are burnished. And then once you get it all on, just go around again one more time, all the way around in a circular motion to make sure everything is rubbed in and you don't have any extra mica flakes or mica powder just hanging out.
And once you get everything burnished in, it's gonna be time for your first coat of epoxy. And with these, you wanna make sure you epoxy until completely smooth before you do any light sanding for a decal. If you start to sand too soon, if you sand the bumps that you're feeling, you're sanding off the details that you've created with your fondant mat. So make sure you epoxy until smooth. It's gonna take probably two coats. Um, mine has two coats on it. I tend to do a little bit thinner coats. Um, so mine has two coats on it and I can still feel a little bit of the bumps. So I don't wanna sand it just yet. And I haven't decided what decal to put on it yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, maybe you can let me know in the comments. But I really appreciate you guys hanging out, watching my video. Hopefully it was helpful. And if you decide to make one of these impression tumblers, I hope you will share it with me in my Facebook group, Crafter Corner. And if you found this helpful, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I try to upload videos regularly. Thanks so much for watching.